Will De Ligt joining Manchester United work for Eric Ten Hag? Will it take Manchester United up the table and pushing back towards Champions League appearances? And ultimately, the aim has to be with Ineos to be winning the Premier League in the near future. Not this season. We can all agree it's not reality to say that. But does De Ligt and Masraoui as well, coming from Bayern Munich, uh, take them closer to where they need to be. We're going to break down the transfer in this video. We're going to start off with an overview of what the deal consists of. 45 to 50 million pounds, basically, uh, with a few add-ons here and there for a player who has got such incredible experience at such a good age, 24, 25. This guy's represented the biggest club in uh, Holland on their best run for 20 years in the Champions League under Eric Ten Hag. We can talk about uh, the last player that joined Manchester United from that side in, in, in Donny van der Beek, which didn't, didn't quite work out. Arguably similar with Frankie de Jong as well. But that move materialised to a massive club in Juventus. He won the league title there. A massive move to Bayern Munich. And again, the transfer fees kind of kept rolling on. Um, and the narrative around uh, uh, De Ligt for me is completely ridiculous. As if he's this washed footballer. As if he's someone that's completely... Uh, pass his sell-by date. This is a guy where, you know, certain centre-backs, I can remember Tony Adams, Sol Campbell, they had some of their best seasons when they were like 32, 31. John Terry was unplayable when he was 34, 35 in his final season for Chelsea, similar to Rio Ferdinand in his final season for Manchester United when they won the title in 2013. Centre-backs progress with age. They understand the game. They read the game. They even maybe lose a yard or two. Look at someone like Ledley King. There's so many centre-backs in the Premier League era that I'm actually referring to. Very comparable, in my opinion, to, to De Ligt in terms of physicality, in terms of stature. And um, If you're going to slag off a player that's played for some three of the biggest clubs around Europe, I love the way he started out Ajax. It's such a young centre-back. The world was on his shoulders because... A lot of attacking flair in that Ajax side, but I remember the way they used to get opened up defensively. It's a it's a trait that you you can see uh, for Manchester United as well with Ten Hag, obviously the same manager. And De Ligt is going to come in and solve that. The fee itself is exciting, fifty million pounds, which means you know this guy doesn't have to set the world on fire. He can be there for three, four, five years and put in a, an array of big performances. And it kind of goes under the radar in a way that maybe Johnny, uh, um, not Johnny Evans, uh, Harry Maguire in particular, 80 million pounds, English. Is he the next Tony Adams? Is he the next Sol Campbell? Well, obviously not. I, I, I think he's underrated. But the pressure for 80 million pounds, you basically round it up to 100 million pounds for Harry Maguire. Uh, and that was years ago as well. It was five years ago, six years ago. Crazy stuff. De Ligt comes in, £50 million. Pounds. It's a snip. His talent on his day, he's worth more than that. He really is. Um, so the, the fee is exciting for Manchester United. Um, obviously, it'll be a long-term deal. This is a guy that can be in his prime years as a centre-back coming in. I think he's more exciting than Lenny Yoro as well. I think, obviously, Yoro has a foot injury. Um, he was very interesting in that first game. I think it was against Rangers, if I'm not mistaken, in preseason, where he looked very, very good, particularly on the ball, looked like a smooth centre-back coming out from, from, the, from the back. But for right now, we're talking about Manchester United have to solve these problems right now. They're, they're one of the great institutions in world football, and they've come eighth. And I remember Liverpool fans, when they struggled under Roy Hodgson, Chelsea fans, the way they berated managers, were kind of coming tenth and, and, and finishing tenth. Um, similar with Arsenal when they came eighth twice with Mikel Arteta. So you're looking at it and thinking De Ligt has got this unbelievable kind of uh, uh, a few years ahead of him, playing for one of the biggest clubs in the world. Uh, he's playing at a time of his career where, again, he's going to blossom into a defender who is just so much more mature. He, by the age of 26, 7, 8, he would have played for Manchester United, Bayern Munich, Juventus, and Ajax. He's a guy that's reliable. I know he's had a few injury concerns last season, but he's played a lot of football uh, in the last uh, five, to, five to six to seven years at the highest level. Manchester United assigned a Champions League level centre-back for relatively not very much. And a, and a, and a centre-back that I think can blossom into the role. You could be looking at a centre-back duo comp uh, comprising of, of Lenny Yoro, co comprising of, of course, uh, De Ligt as well. That looks far more interesting with Martinez in and around there as well. That looks far more dynamic, far more interesting than having Varane, who I think he's been past his sell by date since the day he joined Manchester United. That's my honest opinion. Harry Maguire, decent. Uh, I, th I think he's a West Ham player. He's an Everton player. Uh, even an Aston Villa, Newcastle kind of player. He's not a Manchester United Rolls Royce. Of course not. And you've got Johnny Evans, who obviously missed the penalty in the Community Shield. It's a little bit of a, an embarrassment that he's still at the club. It's more maybe down to the Glazers. I don't think you can necessarily blame Ineos. I think Ineos come in. And I think 
Johnny Evans kind of wasn't expected to play as much football as he did at the start of last season. Uh, I think he was brought in, actually, he was given a contract so he could play an official game in preseason, I think it was, at the start of last season. Um, so that is kind of bad planning, bad management from um, uh, from the, the Glazers. And you can see a difference with Ineos. Whether this translates to uh, uh, Man United coming into the top four, where they absolutely have to with the amount of money that they've spent, we can debate that maybe slightly later in this video. But you can you can see... With Jason Wilcox, with Omar Barada, you can see a little bit more uh, potential of, of Ashworth as well. You can see a little bit more structure. De Ligt is a very smart buy. It's the kind of buy that it, it, it seems to me more data-driven than maybe emotion-driven. A lot of fans on Twitter slagging off Man United, sort of saying that De Ligt was dropped by, uh, was dropped by Tuchel at, at the back end of last season during big games. Um, particularly uh, in the Champions League. And you actually look at it, and you think, actually, no, he was actually injured for large parts of, uh, of the season. Um, and when he has contributed towards Bayern Munich, they've won the league title. He was part of the side that last won the league title before Leverkusen as well. And again, as I mentioned, with Juventus as well. So um, I think it, fe it feels a little bit less emotional. It feels a little bit less Pogba uh, doing a Stormzy track, Sanchez at the piano. It feels a little bit less like that. It feels a little bit more utilitarian a little bit more effective a little bit straight to the point get this guy in prime years he's versatile he can play from the back and the big thing and that's why i do it did a video about it because i'm not going to sit here doing man united transfer videos all the time the reason i think it's so exciting is because people people have short memories in football we were talking about it and i and, and the ix manager himself at the time ten Hag said he will be number one in his position in the world in a few years. He said that in 2019, I think. And it hasn't quite worked out. We've kind of forgotten him in a, in a league where Juve struggled a little bit. Their goal is to win the Champions League. That was that was why they signed Ronaldo, De Ligt and a few other players. He went to Bayern Munich and again, haven't won the Champions League in that era since he joined. So this kind of memory of what De Ligt actually is as a centre-back has gone under the radar a little bit. We're still talking about a guy who can string loads of performances together for Manchester United and actually become... One of the best centre-backs in the world. That ceiling is still on the table. We don't talk about it enough. Sometimes we, we're, we're so quick to discard kind of players and their narratives. And, and and it's very interesting. It reminds me a little bit of when Dennis Bergkamp first joined Arsenal. Obviously very different players. But people forget Dennis Bergkamp wasn't the finished article. Dennis Bergkamp was not liked at Inter Milan. He was not really understood. Now, a centre-back is very different to, to, to um Dennis Bergkamp, of course, but I don't think De Ligt is fully understood of how good he is. Um, maybe my argument's weakened by the fact he wasn't starting many games for Komen at the Euros. But this guy just strikes me as a Premier League centre-back. He, he he strikes me as this physicality comparable of Canate at Liverpool, comparable of Saliba, Gabriel at Arsenal, if not more. Uh, he, he strikes me a, a Kanji kind of physicality. And then he's got this leadership quality about him. He's, he's got this kind of, he can carry the weight of the world on his shoulders because he's played for so many of the big clubs. So there's a 100% this transfer is one of the most exciting transfers Man United have done in a very, very long time. You know, I don't want to talk about, I don't want to be praised as Man United, of course not. But you have to look at the transfer sometimes and just say, yeah, this is really solid. This is really, really good. It's got the right age profile. It's the right amount of money. It's not if it's a hundred million pounds coming straight out of Ajax after having a good season for Ajax a few years ago. It's a different narrative. He's had this experience. People know what he's like, and he's got the frame for the Premier League. He's got this big frame about him, which I do like. So it's obviously a little bit concerning. I do think it alludes to this idea, especially with Masrari coming in as well, backup fullback option for Manchester United when they've definitely needed it with so many players getting injured and Wan Bissaka leaving. There's this element of Manchester United, as much as I hate to say it, of a little bit more effectiveness in the transfer market, a little bit more speed, a little bit more guile. Uh, and I think it's a really interesting transfer for Manchester United. Do you have to let me know what you think in the comments down below? But 45 to 50 million pounds is a snip in today's market. I mean, you're looking at Kilman going to West Ham for 40 million quid. I think, oh, that is crazy. Branthwaite linked for 80 million pounds. This is, he's double the player of Branthwaite right now. He really is with double the experience. Similar age. I mean, Branthwaite's not a million miles off him, three or four years off of him. And it's half the price. It makes a lot of sense to me. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And I'll see you very, very soon.